A very happy day to all of you and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan. In this video, we're going to take a look at the front office activities associated with foreign exchange trading. This is the first video in the FX trade life cycle and I have numbered it as FX video 1 so that those of us who are interested in the entire trade life cycle can then catch up with FX video 2 and 3 whenever I upload them on the middle office and the back office functions associated with foreign exchange trade life cycle. The foreign exchange markets are a volatile market, trading almost $6 trillion every day. It comprises of nervous traders continuously watching the screens as prices change at a flash of a second and there's high energy resonating in the room. The foreign exchange markets trading almost $6 trillion every day is perhaps one of the most global markets in the world as it operates across countries, across continents, across currencies, across regulations as well. The FX market is an over-the-counter market. Unlike an exchange where traders place in buy orders and sell orders, FX market is a court market. A court market means the dealers continuously provide bid-ask quotes. Let's try and understand this very unique aspect of FX quotations because this doesn't exist in the case of equities. It exists only in the case of foreign exchange and to a very large extent in the case of fixed income as well. In FX, Every currency is coated against another currency and therefore the trading takes place in something called as currency pairs. A currency pair means we are coating the reference currency against the base currency. With a trading volume of almost $6 trillion, FX markets therefore are extremely standardized with reference to quotations, with reference to understanding how the three alphabet quotation has been assigned to different countries, currencies, as well as the settlement cycles, the time zones, etc. In the spot market, foreign exchange trades globally are dominated by the currency pair Euro-Dollar. I'm now going to use the quotations, so I'm going to say EUR-USD. The highest volume trades in India take place in USD INR because INR is the currency for India. The other currency pairs that are also traded in the Indian market include Euro, Dollar, USD, JPY, etc. The value date in the foreign exchange markets for all spot trades is T plus 2 working days. T standing for the trade date and 2 working days starting from the trade date. This FX spot market is denominated in 2 working days and is a term that's globally accepted and understood. Let's take a look at FX codes now. It's very important that we understand this aspect of FX quotations because this actually literally hounds the market. I've seen many, many people get confused about it because of the way the quotations are done. So let's take an example of how it's quoted on the Bloomberg screen. I've extracted this from the Bloomberg screen. It says Euro dollar, 1.1286. This means the currency is coated, the USD is coated against the EUR. This implies that one euro, one EUR, fetches us USD 1.1286. This is called as the base currency. In this currency pair, the base is EUR. That means EUR is one and USD changes according to the weakening or strengthening of the EUR. The court currency over here is the latter currency in the sense that it is the currency which changes according to the base and therefore USD in this currency pair is the court currency. In some markets the court currency is also called as a reference currency but it, it means the same thing. To summarize, one EUR fetches us 1.286 USD or 1.1286 USD gives us one EUR, depending on which side of the coat you are on. In FX bid ask quotes, the Euro, let's take an example of what do you mean by bid ask. Euro EUR USD is quoted as 1.1286, 1.1292. So in the previous slide, we just discussed about the base currency and the quote currency. In this slide, we're going to talk about the bid price and the ask price. I already mentioned that in FX markets, the rates are quoted 
per quotation of the bid and the ask. So the price taker goes and asks the price maker, that is the market taker goes and asks the market maker for a quotation. The market maker gives a quotation of EUR USD is equal to 1.1286, 1.1292. This means the market maker, the broker who has given this quote, will buy the base currency, in this case the EUR, at 1.1286. And he will sell the base currency, that is EUR, at 1.1292. So in this case, the bid price is 1.1286. The ask price is called as, also called as offer price in some markets, is 1.1292. So summarize this slide. All prices in FX markets are given as a bid ask quote. That is, the market maker will give the rates at which it is willing to buy the base currency and the rate at which it is willing to sell the base currency. Over here, the base currency is EUR, the code currency is USD, the bid price, the price at which the market maker will buy the base currency, that is 1.1286. 1.1292 is the rate at which the market maker will sell the base currency, that is 1.1292. The euro dollar, let's take a third example, third aspect of the quotation. EUR USD is equal to 1.128692. Over here, I have completely skipped writing 1.12. This is because in FX markets, traders do only pip trading and therefore they don't bother to quote the big figure. The big figure over here is 1.12. The pips are bid pip is 986. And the ask pip is 92. This means the bid ask spread that the market maker enjoys, that is the difference between the buy price and the sell price of the euro, is 6 pips. This is the third aspect of FX quotations. The first aspect is understanding the base currency and the quote currency. The second aspect is understanding the bid price and the ask price. And the third is asking the difference between the pips. Okay, so big figures are rarely quoted. It's only the pips that are quoted on the trading systems. The settlement dates are very standardized in terms of English language and in terms of notation across FX markets. Let's take a look at the settlement dates. The trade date is denominated in, as alphabet T. The value, if the trade is value cash, the settlement will take place on the same day that it is traded. But if the trade takes place, if the trade takes place on a particular day and the settlement is on the next working day, that is T plus 1, it is called as value tom. Value spot is equal to T plus 2, that is trade date plus 2 working days. Okay, and this is called as the standardized settlement terminology that is used in FX markets that is globally accepted. So value cash is the same working day, value tom is the next working day, Value spot is the two working days after the trade date. Let's take an example of how a client order is executed. An exporter approaches Grand Bank with a sell of 15 million euros and asks the bank for a quote. Let's understand this. The exporter is a market taker. He's accepting the price. Grand Bank is a market maker. Grand Bank gives a quotation of 1.1286 hyphen 1.1292. The question to you is, this is a client order. Grand Bank is an interbank player in the bank and the exporter is a client order who is willing to sell euros because he must have received the euros from one of his export contracts. Which rate is applicable for the exporter? Will it be 1.1286 or will it be 1.1292? Remember, the exporter wants to sell euro. You are grand bank. So, euro, grand bank is going to buy EUR. 
So if Grand Bank is going to buy EUR, it's going to buy at a lower rate, at the lower of the two rates. And therefore, Grand Bank would be buying the EUR at 1.1286. That's because Grand Bank is the market maker or the price maker. It is the one that is giving the price. And therefore, the entity has the option, has a choice, has the power, has the ability to influence the prices. The trading position of Grand Bank now gets converted into something like this. Since Grand Bank has bought the EUR from the exporter, Grand Bank now has a long position in EUR of 15 million and a short position of USD as 15 million multiplied by 1.1286. This means right up to settlement date, Grand Bank will be receiving euros and I'll have to pay USD. Okay, so long and short means long is when they have bought the asset, short is when you have sold the asset. Over here, since the currency pair is EUR USD, Grand Bank has bought EUR from the client. Grand Bank now has a long position, they have bought Euro EUR at 15 million, and they have sold USD at 15 million multiplied by 1.1286. You have calculators, Excel, etc. to find out the net answer. What does Grand Bank do with those 15 million that it has bought from the exporter? It must cover the position in the market before the market turns very volatile or if the trade starts turning negative for it. So Grand Bank asks a interbank dealer, what is your quote? And Megastar dealer, after a few hours, I mean, after a few hours of holding on the position, Grand Bank approaches Megastar dealer and Megastar dealer gives a quotation of EUR USD as 1.1302 hyphen 1.1305. Now, in this case, this is an interbank order. Have you understood the difference between a client order and an interbank order? A client order is when you're accepting client orders from different corporate clients or institutional clients and an interbank order is when you are executing the cover trade or you're initiating a position in the interbank market with another broker dealer. Now Grand Bank has asked for a quotation from Megastar. Remember Grand Bank has a long position in euros so Grand Bank will be looking to sell EUR. Okay, They have a long position in EUR as a cover trade, they want to sell EUR. At what rate will they sell EUR? Will it be 1.1302 or will it be 1.1305? In this case of the interbank order, Grand Bank is a market taker and Megastar is a market maker. And therefore, Grand Bank will be able to sell the euro to Megastar at 1.1302. Was this trade profitable to Grand Bank? Let's evaluate that. Grand Bank bought EUR 15 million from client at 1.1286. Grand Bank sold EUR 15 million to Megastar dealer at 1.1302. Grand Bank has sold EUR at a higher rate than it has bought EUR. Therefore, it has made a profit. What about the trading position? Since Grand Bank has bought EUR 15 million, and it has sold 15 million EUR, the trading position is squared off. This means Grand Bank, after this trade, has no exposure left on EUR. So the trading position on EUR is squared off. So we, in the last two slides, we discussed what are client orders and what are interbank orders and how client orders get covered in the interbank market. Trading profits are different from trading positions. Trading positions refers to the volume of trade. Trading profits is the profit after calculating the profit and loss. Okay, so the trading position is long or short. The trading profit is PNL or profit and loss. Thank you so much for watching this video. Keep learning, keep growing, and if you like the content, do share, subscribe. Also, give me suggestions on what you would like me to cover in trade life cycle, operations, regulations, settlements. If you're working with an investment bank or a hedge fund and you'd like to know more, 
Thank you very much. This is your learning partner, Sushila Hariharan, signing off.